welcome to Mo's Garage again. Today's uh, episode, we are going to do a proof of concept for a rollout um, shelf for our kitchen. Um, my wife complains that our kitchen cabinets are too small and we don't have enough room. So the goal is to try to optimize some of the storage space we have. So uh, we have some extra wood from different projects, um, some three, four inch pine and I think this half inch oak. So I'm going to see what I can do with these two pieces just to come up with a sample one to see how the, the design will work. And if everything works out well, then I'm going to make a whole bunch more for the rest of the house. So first things first, we've got to get this stuff cut up. I do have a little sketch that I made just to kind of make sure I understand what I'm doing. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to use the oak as the floor and the pine as the side. We're going to attach the oak to the pine sides by putting a rabbit at the bottom of the of the pine and have some glue and I'm, I'm, I'm going to cheat and I'm going to also use some um, some nails to keep it all together so we'll see how it goes um, I have a pretty good expectations that it'll turn out pretty decently so let's go turn the saws on and have some fun awesome okay so first step is going to be to cut this to size that way I don't um, I have a the large left a larger leftover piece. I'm going to run it through the table saw real quick. Um, I'm going to put the the nice side up because I'm pretty certain it's going to splinter on the bottom. So because we're cutting across the grain, so we'll do that and then we'll cut it down to size. So turn the back on. Might want to plug everything in. Okay. So the good news is it didn't really chip out that well badly. Um, I am using a higher quality blade though, I think it's a 90 tooth in there. Okay, so we'll uh, get the saw reset and cut it to width. Okay, let's get everything set back up again. Cut the table reset to cut uh, three and a half inches wide. Uh, that'll get me two pieces out of here. And after doing the math, we have exactly the right amount of length on this. So sheer coincidence, thank goodness. So it looks like we'll be able to get this uh, proof of concept done without getting any additional wood. So we'll run this through the saw a couple times, and then we'll call it good. So we have our pieces cut. The next step is going to be to cut these down to size for the length of the drawer. And I believe the long part is 22 inches across. And there should be just barely enough for the, the short side, which I believe is 13 and 3 quarters. Yeah, we're good. So, oops, 22, and we'll get 22 in here also. Okay, we're gonna get this to our um, miter saw. So, I'm actually gonna go ahead and also do a line across here, just so I can make sure I hit it correctly. So, let me grab the square real quick. This gives you a better idea of exactly where your saw is going to cut. So, which is a good thing. So we'll get that on there. And then up to the saw. 
Awesome. set up for doing the rabbits. I'm going to put this uh, half inch straight bit in here um, and then we'll use the fence to kind of control how deep it's going to go for the actual cut. So get that good and tight. And then we'll have to do some uh, adjustments up and down. where it's going to be the right depth so and find the wheel so in checking this it uh, looks like our depth is okay we're right at 3 8 but we actually need to make this part here a little bit um, deeper because that's where the half inch plywood is going to go and uh, I actually did that at 3 8 also so I need to really uh, adjust that by another 8 to get it to half inch so we'll go ahead and adjust this and we will give it another whirl so we now have this adjusted correctly so it's time to start running our pieces through there and uh, That'll be uh, it for the rider then, so awesome. So we got the pieces cut out. Um, we ended up having to uh, re remill some of the side pieces. Uh, I had a little bit of a oops on the router table. So now we just basically got to come in here and fix these corners. We need to put a little rabbit at that location. So then this piece here will kind of slip into here and close everything up. Right now, as you can see, the, uh, the end pieces are nice and snug. Um, and the, basically the outside pieces are, are actually just sitting on the side of the plywood. I did leave the back end a little high, um, that way uh, things don't fall off the back when we pull the drawer out. So get those notches done and then we we'll, should be pretty close to being done with this. So good deal, awesome. Okay, I used the router to put the rabbit in the side pieces. So that's kind of gonna show what the finished ed edge conditions look like. Um, on the back, you'll notice that's a little bit taller. As I said, I left that thing tall. Figured it'd be a good thing to um, make sure things don't fall off the back of the, the actual tray itself. We'll round those corners. I think most likely before I glue this, I'll just sand it, give it a quick sand, um, and then we'll glue it together, clamp it up, and uh, then we'll have to do something to soften these uh, pretty uh, sharp corners on the wood. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do in that yet, so we'll see. But yeah, it looks good. Um, I ordered a draw slide so I can uh, install it. It's actually a bottom slide, so since this is actually going to be on the bottom shelf, so uh, I am curious to see how that's going to work. So great, awesome. So next up, I want to go ahead and change this fit out on the router table. I'm going to put a um, kind of a quarter round edge on the pine just to break up that sharp edge. So. We'll kind of go ahead and swap this cutting blade for this cutting blade, and then we'll get the, the router table all set up uh, to go ahead and um, finish up the, uh, the sideboard. So. Now for my least favorite part of the whole thing, it's time to glue these pieces on to see how uh, well this goes. Hopefully it's uh, not eventful.
first things first, we're going to put the clamp across the top here. So we have let this sit overnight just to make sure everything uh, sets well. So we're going to take the clamps off and check it out. So see how it all turned out. So next we'll give it a good sanding, um, just so we can get ready to go ahead and put some finish on it. Kind of keeping in theme was uh, building this out of the stuff out of my garage. I'm actually going to use a Minwax wipe on poly on this. Um, I've had this for quite a while, hopefully it's still good. We'll see. Um, I've always had a lot of success with wipe on polys. Um, they don't leave brush marks. They're easy to apply. They don't drip. So we'll, we'll try that, but before we do that, we've got to give this thing at least a nice uh, light sanding with some 220. We've got to get rid of some of these little corners here that uh, we can do that with the sandpaper. Um, and then we'll get this thing um, finished up with some finish. The draw slides are coming in from Rockler. I have to order those online. I don't have those yet. So uh, once we get the draw slides in, then we'll take them to the kitchen and uh, go ahead and install it and check it out. So in the meantime, we'll do a little sanding. So we're now ready to go ahead and put the wipe on poly. Uh, we've been pretty successful in the past using this. I like it. So it's very simple. Just get a nice soft rag, get some um, get some polyurethane on it, and then literally just wipe it on. Just give it a small coat, and just gonna keep going. Takes a little bit of time for the for the rag to kind of get um, some uh, finish on it. But it's very simple. It's uh, easy to get decent results without worrying about uh, the finish running. You can kind of control kind of uh, how much you put on, etc., etc. So. We'll do the bottom first. And obviously as you put more coats on, it gets, gets on a little bit easier because uh, right now the wood is absorbing it a bunch. So there's definitely some uh, friction going on as I'm trying to rub this. So. But yeah, it takes about pretty similar as normal polyester thing. Three coats to get it nice. So. Um, I do have a disclaimer, this polyurethane is kind of old, so I'm a little curious to see how it's going to set up. Again, this is kind of uh, my, uh, my shelf made with pieces of extra material from my garage, so we'll see how that works out. But I don't see why it should, should go bad. And if it does, it doesn't set, nothing but a little sandpaper and a trip to the store won't fix. So. Again, pretty easy stuff to do. Obviously, uh, if I wanted a little color in this, I would have sanded it, but I think uh, our kitchen cabinets are kind of, that would pull the faux natural oak look. Um, basically particle board is a cover over it. So I think uh, leaving it on natural is going to be very nice. I did end up with a pretty decent gap over here. Um, after looking at it, my wife pointed out that it looks like what I had was a router issue. Uh, the router took a little bit more material at that edge. 
so that is unfortunate. Um, I wasn't super happy that where everything worked out with the router for doing these grooves. Um, it uh, was not uh, did not behave the way I thought it should have. Let's leave it at that. Um, it jumped. It actually ruined the piece, which is why we ended up going with these uh, lower shelves because of the uh, issue with the router, kind of uh, taking out more material than I thought it should have. So that's definitely going to be uh, if I go ahead and build a bunch of these. It's going to be a consideration to make sure that um, I figure that out ahead of time um, and I don't have an issue in the future. So, so that's going to be kind of a, definitely a priority to figure out. Yeah, I suppose that just kind of make sure you get good coverage. And we'll go from there. And then we'll go ahead and put a second coat. Um, once this thing dries off a little bit, we'll have to give it a light sanding. And that's about it for this, I believe. So it does get a little messy with the bottle, so I'm gonna make sure that uh, you wipe it off a little bit. And that's it. So we'll uh, let that wait for, uh, dry for a little bit. We'll give it a second coat, and then we're gonna flip this thing over. I think I'm gonna get a Put two coats on the bottom it's really it's not going to get any wear and tear on it uh, at least i don't think so uh, the top obviously will so we'll get a few coats on that so so uh, that's it and we'll come back uh, later on today and finish it up awesome so i got the back sorted out uh, put a couple of coats of the wipe on poly it looks okay so uh, now it's time to put I'm thinking three coats on the top. So um, the first coat takes a little bit longer to put on because it, that gets kind of sucked up by the wood. But uh, we'll go to town and start doing this. This is where it's nice if I could get my wife to do this because she uh, definitely enjoys doing this kind of work. I've always kind of joked that I enjoy, I'm a builder, but not a finisher. I uh, really enjoy the building process. I've never really been a, um, a uh, huge fan of putting finishing on, finishing on wood and painting things in general. I'm gonna try this, see if that works any better. That might actually work a little bit better. In, So the um, draw guides are actually longer than they need to be, but you can cut them down. So as you can see um, in here, it's a little too long, but uh, we'll take it, uh, we'll do a quick measurement um, and then we'll go ahead and cut it and make it fit. But we will have to, the lip over here is not that big. If you look at this, it's quite, you know, it looks like I must put a spacer in there or something to, be able to get this to this piece here to actually fit over here. So, but uh, we'll sort that out. We'll do one first and see how it turns out and then we'll do the other thing, so. Great. So the magic number was 22 and 5 eighths. So that's from this point right here to the back of this. So the there's a gap right here where this rear bracket attaches to this, the drawer slide. And it's basically right around an eighth. So what we'll do is we'll measure that right at 22 and a half. And that should be uh, the right dimension. So we'll go from here. Two, three, two, and five. Like that. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this through the bandsaw real quick. I have a I have a metal cutting blade on it, and see how that works. It should do okay. So um, let's uh, go over there and see. Uh, get the same cut. Awesome.
Okay, so let's go ahead and see how this thing works. Um, this will be the first time using this fan shell for me. So we'll hopefully everything works out the way it's supposed to. I'll be curious to see it. So that this is a new piece of equipment, new old piece. As the saying goes, just like butter. Nice. That uh, worked quite well. So, okay, well, let's see how this works in the uh, cupboard. So, let's uh, check it out. Good deal. Okay, so we got that fitted in there. It fits nice and tight, so that's kind of good. The, uh, we're going to have to figure out how to sort out that little gap there, so I'm going to have to create some kind of a spacer for it. So, we'll, uh, we'll get back. But that's the right measurement, so it looks good. So, we'll uh, cut the other one down to size, and we'll get a couple of the little uh, pieces in there. Awesome. So the other critical dimension on this is going to be uh, cutting the drawer guides on the go in the drawer itself. So um, kind of laying on, on there, we'll go ahead and mark it up um, from the front to the back. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up the back a little bit. If you notice um, right here, we have a little extra piece of metal. Uh, this thing barely fits, so I'm going to actually grind that extra bit of metal away just to make sure we have a little uh, more of a um, margin of error. So. So we'll uh, get that to the bandsaw, cut it up, and then the grinder will be done. So the good news, I was able to find a piece of plywood. Actually, this is a marine grade uh, plywood that I built a boat with. So I had a little scrap piece, and that should be actually just about the right size for kind of this uh, lip that we have here that we have to put in. So, so I'm gonna cut a couple of strips out of that do, and do that. And the other thing I have to do is I have to modify this bracket back here. So I actually bent this up. The bracket that came was the um, was the slides have it with the uh, attachment point at the bottom. Since I want this to be flush, um, basically I just grabbed this and put it on the uh, vice clamps and bent it up. So that way I can everything flush. So I gotta, I gotta modify this real quick and we will go ahead and just cut a couple of slivers out of this for our spacers. Um, and then we should be in pretty decent shape. So, um, and then we can go back there, mount the, mount the rails. Then we'll have to come back over here and figure out um, where exactly these rails need to go on the bottom here. And so we'll drill, drill some holes and put some screws in it and kind of attach it. So yeah, so we're getting pretty close, getting kind of ready to get this installed in the kitchen. So looking forward to it, awesome. Okay, so we are going to bend this little bracket up in the opposite direction. So that way we can uh, actually have something to hold on to. So we'll just start putting this in the vise. And grabbing our friend here and just bending it as much as it'll go. So that, I think is as good as that gets. And we'll take this out. And the trick for here is gonna to be to figure out how exactly to get this so we can get a good grip on it without bending anything unnecessarily. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this kind of set of uh, sheet metal pliers, grab on, onto this, and give it a little bit of a bend. And that should do the trick. So that should now be in a position where I can um, go ahead and um, screw that into the back. So it's like a little, slightly little bent, so, but I don't think that's gonna be a problem. So, okay, good deal, awesome. So I have uh, both the rails installed, at least temporarily. Um, looks like my little spacers are gonna be perfect. So really the next thing I need to do is just make sure that these things are parallel at both ends. And then uh, I need to take a measurement um, between the two rails so I can make sure that the rails on the drawer are correct. So, so we'll do that real quick um, and then we'll uh, go back. I think I'm going to drill some pilot holes first and then we'll put some screws in this thing so to lock it down. Um, so yeah, good deal. Awesome. So I went ahead and uh, measured the, the rails. There's uh, 13 inches between the outside to the outside. So we will see what we have to work with here. So this is basically 14 and a half. So if we take 13, it's one and a half. 
So it would literally be three quarters from the edge here and three quarters from the edge of the here. Full parkish. And so somewhere in the middle here we should have around 13, which we do. Okay, so um, I'll get this kind of laid out a little bit more accurately. Um, then we'll get some drills, holes drilled in this and find some screws that are gonna work with this. So, um, so let's, uh, and then once we do that, we'll go ahead and uh, get the one in the kitchen cabinet uh, tied down. And then I think we're done with this project. So uh, good deal, looking forward to it. Okay, so I have the draw, draw guides right out where they need to be. So, so we have 13 inches between them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-drill some holes just so we can get the screw started. And then we'll come back with a little screw and bring it in. So I got some holes drilled in here already. So this is literally just a pilot. Just enough to where the screw can get started. Okay, so I went ahead and drilled a couple holes here um, to attach the rail. I also um, had to expand the size of this hole so that the screws that I found will work um, and go through there. So, just, so I'm going to go ahead and just get the screw on real quick and see how it goes. Hopefully it'll go well now. Our friend here to work with that. Nope. Not enough of a. So we'll do this the old fashioned way by hand. Okay, sound very good. The other one. And hopefully this does not interfere with the actual ability of the rail to go in. That's, we will have to see about that, that's for sure. Now that we have the rails attached to the bottom, we're going to drill a couple of holes in uh, the side here. I think I'm only going to really use just the one screw. Um, I don't think we need much more than that. And then we should be kind of finished on this side. Put a couple of screws in there and we should be in good shape. And then it's just a question of attaching the rail to the kitchen and hopefully we have this nice little drawer made entirely out of pieces of scrap material <laughs> that were in the garage. So we call this uh, quasi recycled, I guess. There's one. There's two. I think the drawer front is done. Okay, time to take it to the kitchen. So I have the tracks laid inside the cabinet. I went ahead and marked the back end so I can pre-drill some holes. And then I'm gonna basically uh, put the spacers in there. I'm just gonna go with just the one hole, which, I'm, which is this one right here. 
on both of them, that will give us some adjustability. In the back, those are the ones that I actually, I marked also were the ones that gives us a little bit of adjustability uh, to, you know, just in case I don't have it all right. So we'll uh, get the shoulder out, hooked up, and then hopefully it all works. Awesome. Okay, so for the big reveal here, we're gonna to try to see if this threads. And looks like, hmm, looks like we're gonna have to take the door off. This hinge here is um, interfering with my ability to get that in the track. Uh, knew ahead of time that this hinge is gonna be a problem. That's part of the reason why we cut this thing so short. Um, so hopefully if I take the door off, we'll be able to slide it in. So um, let me grab the tools and we'll do that. So it turned out I put these rails on backwards, uh, so I need to swap them around and I try to put it in the drawer. Uh, for whatever reason, it would not go in and all of a sudden it's like, oh crap. So I'm just gonna take this apart real quick, swap the rails, try again. So um, hopefully, I think the dimensions should also be the same. So I just think when I put it together, I just got the wrong rail in the wrong location, so cool. So let me uh, get these swapped and then we'll see what happens. Awesome. So good news, bad news. Um, the good news is uh, we figured out exactly how to make this thing work. The bad news is, is the fact that um, I had these grow guides in two part in to the point where the whole um, drawer was kind of wobbly. So I had to kind of bring everything out about an eighth of an inch on each side so it kind of matches properly. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not super impressed with these uh, draw guides. Even though it's uh, been uh, adjusted correctly now, it's not super smooth, at least not by modern standards. Um, come to find out that these were replacements for some uh, draw guides that were, I'm assuming, kind of vintage. So um, if I do uh, some more of these, I will definitely go with a different draw guide this time because this had to be these. These are not, I'm not super impressed with the way this whole thing has turned out, so. Um, but it's, hence the whole proof of concept. So this way we can know what we're gonna do in future drawers if we decide to build them, so. You're always gonna have one to make all your mistakes on, so. So that's attached. We'll go grab it. Put it in here, see how it works. So there it is. A little noisy, but uh, I guess it'll work. Now for our next trick is will the hinge work? So we'll put the door back on and see if it works. Fingers crossed. Okay, thank you. So good news is we got the drawer back on and our, our slide misses it. So that's excellent news. So um, again, um, this is kind of the finished product. I'm not super happy with these rollers. It's very, you can almost feel like metal on metal. Um, but um, so I think next time I need to do a little bit more research online and get some other rollers. But uh, at least this is a good first start. So we'll uh, load her up and hopefully everything fits. Cool. Well, hey, thanks for watching. If you really enjoyed this video, uh, please hit like below. Give us a big thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Bye for now. If you like this video, hit subscribe and give us a big like down below. Thanks for watching.